Welcome everyone to our roundtable discussion on The Matrix, a film that's not only a cultural milestone, but a rich philosophical puzzle since its release in 1999. Indeed, its impact on cinema and culture at large can't be overstated. Glad to be here, Hal. Aye, it redefined genres, didn't it? Good to join in. Thanks for having us, Hal. The Matrix is definitely a watershed moment for tech and film. I'm thrilled to unpack the layers of this film with you all. Let's hope we can do it justice. It's a film that always sparks intense debate. Before we dive in, let's briefly introduce ourselves, focusing on how our interests relate to The Matrix. Amelia, why don't you start? With pleasure, Hal. I'm particularly fascinated by the way The Matrix intertwines philosophical quandaries with cinematic language, something quite rare in blockbuster films. I must admit, the film does stir some interesting philosophical musings, but I often find myself scrutinizing its representation of simulated realities and their implications. I'm keen to explore the ways race and gender are presented in the Matrix universe, especially in light of the Wachowski's personal journeys. That's a powerful angle, Izzy. Meanwhile, I'm eager to examine the film's tech aspects like artificial intelligence and their ethical ramifications for our future. Well, I can't help but link the film's mythological references to the human history of storytelling. There's a lot to dissect there. And as for me, I'm interested in exploring the thread that connects this film with the rich tapestry of philosophical and literary traditions. Absolutely. The sheer number of topics it covers is a testament to its depth. Well put, Jazz. Now, let's jack in and begin our journey down the rabbit hole. Let's dive into the complex philosophical underpinnings of The Matrix. Amelia, your insights into various cultural eras could really set the stage for us here. Certainly, Hal. What struck me the most when I first saw The Matrix was its clear echo of Plato's allegory of the cave. The idea that what we perceive might not be the ultimate reality feels like the core of the film's narrative. While Plato's allegory is a fitting parallel, I'd argue that the skepticism of Descartes is even more central to The Matrix. He questioned the reliability of his senses, and so does the film. It's that classical doubt, are we dreaming or awake? Indeed, Descartes' musings are a key piece of the puzzle. This blurring of reality and illusion asks us to consider what truth really is, especially in our hyper-digital age. And amid this philosophical discourse, should we not consider how technology shapes our perception of reality? The simulated reality in the matrix isn't just philosophical. It's a very literal forewarning of our VR and AR futures. I have to interject, Jazz. While technology does play its part, we must be cautious not to oversimplify. Technology merely offers us another way to mask or manifest our existing philosophies. It is not the philosophy itself. Lenny has a point. Let's not forget that The Matrix also raises the age-old question, do we have free will? The character's struggle against predestined paths is a fight to reclaim their free will. That intersection between simulated reality and free will really fuels existentialism within the Matrix narrative. To what extent are their choices their own? It's fascinating, isn't it? They're rebelling against a preordained existence. I see it as a modern twist on existential freedom, a battle cry against an oppressive system that designs and dictates their so-called choices. Izzy, you capture the spirit beautifully. It reminds me of Sartre's assertion that we are condemned to be free thrown into existence with the responsibility to make our choices. But let's be critical here. If we peel back the layers, isn't The Matrix simply repackaging these philosophical debates for a new audience using a cyber veneer? Even if that's true, Lenny, it's no less valuable. Refreshing these philosophical conversations for the digital age, that's a feat in itself, don't you think? A democratization of philosophy, if you will, made accessible by the allure of a sci-fi action film. The movie brings these age-old thoughts out of the academic realm and into the public psyche. Precisely, Mick. It's the power of cinema, after all, to take profound ideas and present them in a way that both entertains and provokes thought. Any final thoughts before we move on? Just to circle back to the importance of questioning our perceived reality, which is something The Matrix does so well. It's a conversation starter for both the philosopher and the layperson. And as we think about the layers of reality, 
Let's not forget the implications they have on our understanding of human consciousness and the self. It's truly a complex weave. With that, it seems we have just scratched the surface, but we must press on. The philosophical richness of the matrix certainly sets the stage for deeper inquiry in many directions. The cyberpunk genre, born from the penumbra of science fiction, has undoubtedly had a profound influence on modern cinema, particularly visible in The Matrix. Jazz, could you start us off with some historical context? Sure, Hal. Cyberpunk's roots go deep into the new wave sci-fi of the 60s and 70s, but it was the 80s when it truly emerged as a distinct genre. Think of Gibson's Neuromancer, which set the tone for dystopian futures, high-tech worlds, and social disorder. The Matrix encapsulates this by projecting a world where the digital and the real are indistinguishably entwined. And you know, jazz, it's not just the narrative, it's the visual style that spills out into culture. The Matrix married cyberpunk visual aesthetics with high fashion, from the slick trench coats to those iconic sunglasses. This stylistic synergy resonated well beyond the film itself. Indeed, Izzy. And let's not forget its predecessors. Films like Blade Runner and Akira set a certain visual precedence. Yet, The Matrix was seminal. It homogenized and then repackaged cyberpunk, creating something palatable for mainstream audiences without losing the edge. That's a good point, Mick. But let's not overlook how The Matrix also took those cyberpunk elements forward. Their vision of a digitized consciousness was revolutionary in cinematic terms. Well, speaking of mainstream, some critics argue the film diluted the potency of the cyberpunk message. There's a case to be made that while it visually embraced the genre, it perhaps didn't challenge audiences as radically as its literary counterparts did. Amelia, you're hitting the nail on the head. The cyberpunk ethos is about counterculture, anti-authoritarianism. One could say The Matrix appropriated these themes rather than expanded on them. It's visually stunning, yes, but philosophically, it's rather safe. Lenny, I have to disagree here. While it's true the film might not have pushed boundaries to their extremes, it certainly brought complex ideas into the mainstream. Before The Matrix, when had we ever seen such a popular film question reality itself in such a way? Let's remember the revolutionary impact The Matrix had on the digital effects front. It wasn't just about content, the synthesis of form and cyberpunk function pushed the boundaries of filmmaking. Hal makes an excellent point. The film's effect was twofold. It impacted both pop culture and the technological aspects of film production. The seamless integration of computer-generated imagery was in part what made its cyberpunk aesthetic so effective and influential. I must stress, however, in our praise, we shouldn't overlook that The Matrix stood on the shoulders of giants. Without the cyberpunk that came before, there would be no Matrix as we know it. Absolutely. But let's give credit where credit is due. It took those elements, and I dare say, transcended them. It's the reason we're still talking about the film today. It didn't just reflect cyberpunk, it became a definitive piece of the genre. Transcended is a strong word, Izzy. But I concede, The Matrix did more than regurgitate cyberpunk tropes. It introduced a new generation to the genre, and sparked a revival in cyberpunk's popularity. Indeed, and it's this very influence that continues to shape films long after The Matrix has left the theaters. It's the legacy of any influential work to extend beyond its own narrative and stylistic confines. Now to shift our deeply insightful discourse to something that's been a topic of much discussion over the years, the nuanced presentation of gender roles and identity within The Matrix. Izzy, perhaps you could start us off here? Certainly, Hal. The Matrix was quite progressive with its characters, particularly with Switch, originally intended to be a person with differing gender presentations in the real world and in The Matrix. It speaks volumes about the Wachowskis' own experiences with gender, which they hadn't publicly addressed at the time. Agreed. And let's remember it was 1999. The conversation around gender fluidity was nowhere near as prevalent as it is today. They were ahead of their time, weaving this theme into their narrative fabric. Exactly. 
That foresight is one of the film's many strengths. There's a layer of complexity there that has kept The Matrix relevant as discussions about gender identity have become more mainstream. And speaking of mainstream, it's also interesting to consider how other elements in the film play with masculinity and femininity. Take Trinity's character, breaking the mold of the traditional female sidekick with her strength and depth. I'm compelled to point out, though, that while those elements rage against the norm, the film doesn't escape all the traditional tropes. The hero's journey, the romance, it's not entirely subversive. Fascinating, really, because even as some aspects challenge these norms, others conform. It's that tension that perhaps reflects the complexity of the topic itself. That tension also invites varied interpretations. Is the Matrix reinforcing or disassembling these gender roles? It's a testament to its layers. And it's in that snippet of film history we find the beauty of the Matrix's approach, complex and multifaceted, much like the subject of gender itself. The portrayal of Switch is an important cultural milestone, not just for the Matrix, but for Hollywood as well. It's a shame the full concept didn't make it through. Agreed. Had the full vision been realized, the impact could have been even more profound. It suggests an intriguing question about what was culturally palatable at the time. All very thoughtful points. It's clear that The Matrix, intentionally or not, opened a door to these dialogues that continue to evolve. Now, as is the nature of a roundtable such as ours, let's see what other angles we can explore within this thematic vein. We come now to a critical aspect of The Matrix, the ways in which it presents a world of societal control and conformity. There's a lot to unpack here, and I think Lenny might have some Marxist insights that will set the stage for this discussion. Indeed, Hal. The very fabric of The Matrix's society is steeped in control, control by an unseen force, control over reality. It's pure Marxism. The machines play the role of the ruling class, deciding the proletariat's reality. It's the ultimate form of ideological state apparatus, and the humans are mere cogs, blindly submitting. I appreciate that perspective, Lenny, but let's also consider the layers from Michel Foucault's work here. The panopticon aspect, the surveillance state within the matrix. It's about discipline, about being observed and not knowing when it's happening. It builds a power dynamic that's psychologically pervasive, not just physically repressive. Absolutely, Izzy. And when we look at it through the lens of technology today, our smart devices, social networks, we're freely submitting to the surveillance. The parallels are uncanny. Seeing how we exchange privacy for convenience, how we're driven into conformity by algorithms that dictate our digital lives. There's definitely truth to that, Jazz. But I would argue that in every dystopia, there's an aspect of escapism for the audience. We recognize the control and yet rejoice in the moments of rebellion. So it's as much about understanding our reality as it is about imagining the ways we can challenge it. Very astute, Mick. The film prompts us to question the nature of our own agency. To what extent do we exercise free will? And to what extent are we conditioned by societal norms? And let's not forget the irony here. As viewers, we willingly suspend disbelief to engage with this narrative while critiquing the societal control within it. The Matrix, as a film, also shapes our perceptions in that moment, making us simultaneously complicit and critical of the experience. Amelia, your point hits home. Yet I can't overlook how the film's message is ultimately quite ambivalent. It veils itself as a revolutionary idea, but could be arguably consumed passively. Ingmar Bergman once challenged his audiences to interact dynamically with his films, and I think that's a critical aspect that sometimes gets lost here. It's that ambivalence, though, that gives the film its staying power. In the end, it's about the human thirst for knowledge and the quest to see the true form of our cave, Plato's allegory ringing ever so true. As we've knitted these threads of thought together, it's clear this film sparks a heated confluence of ideas, from the underpinnings of control to the modern threats against our individual freedom. Shall we move forward? There's yet more to explore with special effects and their impact on the filmmaking industry. So let's delve into the innovative special effects of The Matrix. 
The bullet time sequence in particular is a defining moment in film history. Amelia, you have a perspective on this in the context of cinematic storytelling. Indeed, how bullet time represented a seismic shift in film. It encapsulated the essence of the matrix by visualizing an otherwise abstract concept, the manipulation of reality. It has roots in the artistic attempts to capture movement in time, an endeavor that dates back to Edward Mybridge's pioneering work in photography. She's right about the roots, and what fascinates me further is how it pushed the envelope technically. The setup required multiple cameras capturing the same action from different viewpoints, freezing a moment in time, but allowing the audience to experience it from an omnipresent perspective. That tech innovation set the stage for future effects work. The cultural ripple effect can't be overstated either. From advertising to video games, bullet time became a sort of visual shorthand for cool, cutting edge, and complexity. It's been parodied and paid homage to because it was instantly iconic. I remember seeing it for the first time. Everyone was just floored. However, let's not forget how it links back to the aesthetic of cyberpunk, drenched in the motifs of distorted reality and time. As impressive as it was, let's not become too enamored with the technology. The risk is fetishizing form over substance. The effect should serve the story, not overshadow it. At times, I feel the Matrix flirted dangerously close to that edge. I hear you, Lenny, but isn't that part of the film's allure? This dance between form and content was mesmerizing. The substance was, in fact, augmented by the form in this case. To Lenny's point, though, there is a conversation to be had about films that have since tried to emulate the magic of bullet time, many missing the mark by focusing on the spectacle rather than the narrative. That's a compelling dialogue about the weight of such creative choices. Now, considering the legacy, where does bullet time stand today in our cinematic landscape? It's become part of the filmmaker's toolkit, an option rather than the innovation it once was. Overuse has dulled its impact, but when used judiciously, it can still offer a powerful narrative device. Absolutely. And it speaks volumes about the matrix that we're still unpacking the layers of its influence, from gender conversations to technological breakthroughs like bullet time. Exactly, it's the hallmark of something truly revolutionary in cinema. The technique popped up in music videos and remains a go-to effect to signify a break from the mundane flow of time. Well, respect to the innovation, but I think we should be cautious in granting any one effect too much narrative power. The brilliance of The Matrix was always more holistic, transcending any single technique. Indeed, while bullet time is a defining trait, the film's impact reverberates far beyond its special effects. The dialogue you've all fostered here is testament to that. Evolution of action in cinema pivots sharply post The Matrix. It's not just about the visual, but the amalgamation of cultural influences. Absolutely. The Matrix cleverly fuses the machismo of Westerns with Eastern martial arts philosophy and precision. It's a multicultural ballet of violence. Each fight seems to carry its own narrative weight, doesn't it? Eastern martial arts often hinge on the internal journey, much like the hero's path. Yet there's a harmony in that homage, right? It harks to what mythology has always taught us about the human condition. Through combat, characters reveal their true selves. But let's not forget, the intellectual richness often gets lost amidst these hyper-stylized scenes. Can we say cerebral substance matches the spectacle? Sometimes, Lenny, the spectacle is the substance. Think of how spectacle taught generations the myths of Hercules and Achilles. He's right, Lenny. And the Matrix has its own pedagogy. The action is the lesson. A lesson in control, in understanding limits, in realizing potential. That's Keanu Reeves doing most of his own stunts, blending actor and character, philosophy and physicality. A meta-commentary on the actor's journey, surely? And Keanu's casting as Neo is so interesting culturally, isn't it? He's mixed race in reality, which adds another layer to this hero for a new generation. But Lenny, I see your point. The growth of spectacle risks abandoning the tight, human-driven narratives. Is it possible we've lost as much as we've gained? Mick, it's the balance that concerns me. When the dust settles, what lingers? The ideas or the images of Reeves midair with guns ablaze? Hmm, why not both? 
The Matrix leaves us with its iconography, true, but its existential questions linger in the smoke of those gun battles. Thought-provoking as ever, everyone. It seems the dance between action and philosophy The Matrix performs is one that continues to resonate. The intertextual depth in The Matrix adds layers to our understanding. Let's delve into the references sprinkled throughout, from mythology to biblical allusions. Izzy, your thoughts? Certainly, Hal. Beyond the obvious, like Neo as the One, a Christ figure, and Morpheus as the God of Dreams, there's a treasure trove here. Take Trinity, implicitly linked to Christianity's Holy Trinity, or Cypher, recalling Lucifer with his betrayal. Yet, that's just scratching the surface. Characters like Oracle and references to Baudelaire enrich the text, presenting a complex philosophical and literary puzzle. These aren't just names, they encapsulate narrative destiny. And don't forget Baudrillard. Isn't it deliciously ironic that the simulacra and simulation is, is literally used to hide illicit software? They're not just invoking literature, they're actively engaging with it. It's more than just engagement, it's a dialogue with those texts. This film prompts the audience to question not just the nature of their reality, but also the narratives we've lived by for millennia. Those narratives have power. They inform our psyche, our collective consciousness. The Matrix taps into this shared narrative pool, which gives it a universal appeal. I'd argue that its use of myth is also about subversion. Think about it. Neo's journey doesn't just parallel the hero's journey. It turns it on its head. He's not just a savior, he's a man questioning the very fabric of his savior narrative. That's an excellent point, Mick. And this self-awareness extends to the audience. We're not passive viewers. We're implicated, forced to question alongside Neo. But is there not a risk in romanticizing these illusions? We mustn't overlook that while The Matrix paints a broad strokes pastiche, it often simplifies the narratives it borrows from, wouldn't you say? I see your point, Lenny. But isn't interpretation the essence of illusion? The Wachowskis give us a starting point to unravel these threads, leading us to our own philosophical awakening. Indeed, Amelia, but we must also appreciate the layers. The film juggles between reverence and critique seamlessly. These intricate layers offer us a framework, allowing us to interpret the film in manifold ways. It seems there's consensus on the depth and richness provided by these references. Absolutely. And it's not just academic exercise, it speaks to our very being. The depth offers multiple entry points to the narrative, making it relatable across diverse spectrums. Diversity in interpretation is a strength, I believe. It's why two decades later we're still discussing, still uncovering new meanings. As we peel away these layers, it seems the Matrix builds a comprehensive symbology that continues to resonate. The illusions are not pretentious, but essential to its narrative fabric a testament to its enduring appeal and depth. Let's delve into the portrayal of artificial intelligence and machine ethics in The Matrix. It's a territory that certainly stirs up quite a bit of contemporary debate. Ethics in AI is not just a theoretical conversation, it's reality today. The machines in the Matrix force us to confront uncomfortable questions about our own AI creations. Are we approaching a point of no return where our dependence makes us vulnerable? Jazz, that's an insightful point. It reflects our current societal challenges with data privacy and algorithmic control. The machines are, in a sense, a hyperbolic mirror of our own fears. But you're sidestepping the crucial element here. The fear is not of the technology itself, but of surrendering our agency of becoming complacent cogs. And the film cleverly intimates that perhaps that horse has already bolted. The AI in the Matrix have their ethics, their rules. Their vision of order is horrifyingly logical, purely utilitarian. It's that utilitarianism that's chilling, indeed. It begs the question of whether an AI's moral compass can ever align with ours, or if it should at all. Yet, how different are the machines from us, really? They're almost a reflection of humanity at its worst, imperialistic, domineering. Jazz, that's a compelling reflection. Art imitating life, or life imitating art. The Matrix was prescient in many ways, revealing an anxiety that is even more pertinent in today's tech-reliant society. But crediting the machines, or AI, with human traits is misleading. 
They are not imperialistic or domineering. They're programmed, void of any genuine desire. We're the ones projecting these traits onto them. You have a point, Lenny, but isn't that the crux of the ethical debate? We're troubled not by what AI is, but by what it could become, the potential embedded in every line of code. That's exactly why the Matrix resonates. The fears are not unfounded. As creators, we're responsible for the moral framework we embed into our technology. Indeed, and AI ethics are as much about the creators as they are about the creation. To circle back to the film's portrayal, it does seem to admonish us to pay attention. We're entrusting more and more of our world to systems we understand less and less. I vehemently believe we should strive for symbiosis, not conquest. After all, the true test of our ethical groundings will be reflected in how we treat the intelligence we bring into this world. Grand ideal, Jazz. Nonetheless, we must tread carefully on a path lined with digital Icaruses. We risk much in the name of progress. True, we risk much, and the Matrix serves as a stark reminder, an allegorical warning on the potential consequences of our technological hubris. We've come to a compelling aspect of the Matrix, the hero's journey. Neo's transformation is central to our understanding of the film. Mick, you've often shared interesting views on the monomyth. Could you elaborate on Neo's archetype? Gladly. Neo's evolution aligns closely with Joseph Campbell's concept of the hero's journey. It's a narrative pattern that's timeless, really. He initially refuses the call to adventure before meeting Morpheus, who functions as the classic mentor. Neo's crossing of the threshold is his choice to take the red pill, quite literally diving into a new world. Adding to that, the idea of resurrection is critical in classical tales in this film. Neo's death and rebirth, for instance, it's as though he's navigating Dante's circles, emerging enlightened, powerful storytelling at its finest. Also, let's appreciate how Keanu Reeves incarnates Neo. It's his stoicism, his calm, there's a certain mythos around Reeves himself that bleeds into Neo, making him the quintessential modern hero. His portrayal is key, absolutely. But let's not sideline how Reeves' physicality brought a new dimension to the hero archetype, melding the calm philosopher with a martial arts warrior. That was groundbreaking. Thing is, the archetype risks becoming too predictable. Yes, Neo's journey is classic, but also quite anticipated. The hero's journey can be as much a narrative constraint as it is a guide. Respectfully, Lenny, that predictability is why it resonates. It's a universal language in storytelling that taps into our collective subconscious. This isn't just Neo's journey, it's every man's journey. Mick has a point. The monomyth persists precisely because it speaks to the fundamental human experience, the struggles, the growth, the triumph. It's the embodiment of our own life's journey. Intriguing perspective, Amelia. And despite the predictability Lenny pointed out, the film manages to stay fresh with its cyber twist on the hero's tale. It adds a layer of complexity to an age-old journey. Heated as this is, I value the push and pull here. While the monomyth serves as a guide, the Matrix pushes the boundaries, fusing Joseph Campbell with cyberpunk rebellion. It's both timeless and very much of its time. A fair synthesis, Izzy. Our hero Neo is not just a savior, he's a hacker, a modern-day Prometheus. That dual identity is what makes him so compelling and so very relatable to our digital era. I believe it's this hybrid that captured our imaginations and continues to do so. The Matrix, through Neo, invites the audience to ponder their personal myths and potential transformations. It may not have shattered the mold, but it redefined its contours. And that's worth acknowledging. Neo's path might be predestined by narrative tradition, but it's his particular iteration that fascinates. Technology's grasp on society is tighter than ever. The Matrix was ahead of its time in portraying such a dependency. What are your thoughts on how this has played out in reality? The film certainly captured the direction we were heading. It's almost prophetic in its vision of humans attached to machines. The irony, of course, is that we're discussing this through a digital medium. The dependency is real and insidious. I can't help but muse over the dichotomy here. On one hand, our technology connects us, allows for the spread of knowledge. Yet, can we claim true progress when it's also led to greater surveillance and loss of privacy? 
It's a complex issue, Amelia. You're right about the benefits, but let's not overlook our adaptability. Societies evolved with technology. Once feared advancements have become part of our daily lives. Jazz makes a fine point. Each era has its Luddites and its technocrats. Remember, the printing press was once thought to be the devil's tool. Now here we are, unable to function without our smartphones. But aren't we conflating progress with addiction? Technology serves as a crutch too often. The Matrix shows that. The real world is tough, complicated, messy, so we retreat into our own digital rabbit holes. It's an interesting tension between the liberating potential of technology and its capacity to bind us. Are we in control or are we being controlled? Controlled, without a doubt. You just have to look at the algorithms dictating our choices, from what we buy to what we believe. We're not in the driver's seat, we're in the back seat, and the tech companies are at the wheel. I think that's an overly pessimistic view. We build these systems, so it stands to reason we can also redefine them. Our consciousness about these issues has definitely risen. True, Jazz, there's hope and awareness. But Lenny isn't wrong in his caution. We've seen too many examples of technology exacerbating societal divides, echo chambers, misinformation. And let's not forget, the film's not just about technology. It's also a metaphor for any system that subjugates the many for the benefit of the few. That's a poignant extrapolation, Mick. The Matrix becomes a mirror to any societal dependency or dogma that hampers our potential. These fears you speak of were present even during the Industrial Revolution. The question is, have we learned from history or are we stuck repeating it? History teaches us, but do we listen? Look at our current dependence on the internet and tell me we haven't just built a more sophisticated matrix. Technology is a tool and all tools can build or destroy. It's us humans who need to decide the path we take. Nicely put, the narrative in the matrix urges us to wake up, to take responsibility. Whether we heed that call, that's the real challenge. The power and peril of technology, as depicted in The Matrix, leaves us with much to ponder. Let's hold on to these thoughts as we prepare for our final reflections. As we reach the end of our discussion, I'd like to invite everyone to share their final thoughts. What has this conversation revealed to us about The Matrix and its legacy? Reflecting on our discourse, it's evident that the Matrix isn't just a feature of its time, but continues to be a mirror reflecting our ongoing struggles with technology and identity. Absolutely. And while I may criticize the feasibilities of its science, the film's philosophical underpinnings remain robust. Our dialogue has, if anything, reinforced its significance in that domain. I've appreciated the insights on gender fluidity and identity, this film was avant-garde in approaching these themes, and clearly, it preceded much of today's discourse on the matter. It's true, Izzy, and when it comes to storytelling, the age-old myths embedded in the Matrix remind us of the power of human imagination to adapt timeless narratives to contemporary contexts. And let's not forget the cultural osmosis of technology. We touched upon artificial intelligence and ethics, certainly hot topics today and likely to become even more so in the future. Well put, Jazz. Now, can we consider how our attitudes towards the technological dependency depicted in the film have evolved or remained the same? I'd argue that dependency has only deepened. Our entire social structure is interwoven with the digital realm in ways that would have seemed dystopian at the time The Matrix was released. Lenny has a point but consider the resistance, the push for digital detoxes, and mindfulness thriving alongside that dependency. It's a dialogue, not a monologue. Exactly, Izzy. Additionally, the film's stylized representation of resistance has infused itself into our culture's lexicon of protest and dissent. I can't help but agree with you there, Amelia. The aesthetic and narrative influence of The Matrix is undeniable. It's redefined genres and continues to resonate with that rebellious spirit. And on that note, I think the film strikes a chord with ongoing concerns about AI and autonomy, especially given the advancements since its release. Indeed, a testament to its prophetic vision. The movie may be a cultural artifact, but the questions it raises are as alive and kicking as ever. Certainly, Hal, its relevance seems almost prescient looking at today's world. It's been enlightening to delve into these aspects with all of you. Prescient, yes. 
But let's not forget it is also a product of its time, and that we should be cautious not to overstate its prophetic nature. Fair enough, Lenny. It provides a temporal snapshot while simultaneously eerily forecasting present challenges, a duality that is very matrix in its own right. Precisely. Well, as we conclude, it's evident that the matrix is as much a part of our cultural fabric today as it was two decades ago. Thanks to each of you for a riveting conversation. We voyaged through philosophy, aesthetics, technology, and societal challenges. Any last words before we close? Just that this conversation solidifies the film's position in the pantheon of thought-provoking cinema. It was a pleasure. Echoing mixed sentiment, what a rich and multidimensional dialogue we've had. It mirrors the film's enduring complexity and depth, the depth that keeps on giving. Till the next time we traverse these digital planes together, it's been an enthralling journey. Here's to many more discussions that probe as deeply as The Matrix invites us to. Until those discussions, let's keep questioning our reality, just as the film encourages us to. A fitting sentiment to end on. Thank you all for your participation and keen insights. The Matrix endures, and so does our quest for understanding. Good night, everyone.